If you are feeling frustrated and overwhelmed and like all of the plans that you had for your homeschool are failing, maybe you've even considered sending your kids back to school, I have a sneaking suspicion that you might be doing one of these five things that are ultimately sabotaging your peace and your success as a homeschool family. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you five bad habits that we can often fall into, myself included, <laughs> that can cause problems in our homeschool, make us feel like giving up. And then I'm gonna give you some ideas of how you can counter those bad habits and reclaim the peace and joy in your homeschool. The first bad habit is trying to do too many things. Oftentimes, if things aren't going the way that we envision, we feel like we need more of something to improve what you were doing so that we can make things better. So we start adding on more curriculum, more activities, more books, more extracurriculars, all of the things. In reality, adding more things to our homeschool often creates more stress than it's actually resolving. What we really need is more margin in our homeschool. One of the things that can really help is to keep it simple, to dial back and really just focus on the core subjects. Get those dialed in and feeling like you are in a groove, things are going well, you're happy, your kids are enjoying learning again, and then you can start to add some of those extra subjects in. The key is to only add those things on once you feel like you have everything else under control. And then, adding them on in baby steps rather than just throwing them all back in at the same time, doing one thing at a time, and then feeling like you are under control again before you add something else. For out of the home activities, make sure you are not over committing. You really need to consider how much time you are willing to spend away from the home, especially while you're just trying to get a good routine and a plan figured out for yourself. Keep in mind that you do not need to do every single subject every single day. This is a really hard mindset to get out of if you come from the public school setting or if you're brand new to homeschooling, we can really tend to think that we need to hit all of the things every day and it's just not true. And we don't need to be scheduling the entire day out for learning activities. Homeschooling allows us to get through far more material in a much shorter period of time than being in a traditional school setting because you have that one-on-one -on -one attention. Make sure you leave plenty of time for some free play activities, downtime for yourself and for the kids, and that will help you get regrounded in your homeschool. The second big mistake that we often can make is trying to copy what other homeschoolers are doing. Sometimes we even just hear friends talk about great curriculum they're using or activities they're doing, and we think that if we do those things that it's gonna make us happier, make us feel more successful as a homeschool family. So we can tend to try to just recreate what they're doing because it looks so beautiful for what they're doing. But the problem is when we start doing it for ourselves, our kids are different. <laughs> We're different, our family's different, and what works for them often does not work for us. I've been homeschooling for a little over 10 years now, and about six or seven years ago, I had joined Instagram. I started seeing all of these pretty, beautiful, Charlotte Mason type feeds on social media. And it looked so amazing that they were doing all these beautiful art projects. They were all, you know, all the kids in the family played musical instruments and they were doing nature studies. They were outside all the time. They were doing all of these amazing, amazing things. And it felt like that was something I wanted to recreate in our homeschool because they looked like they were having so much fun and they were so at peace with how they were doing things that I wanted that for me. So <laughs> I decided to dive into a more Charlotte Mason based homeschool. There are so many amazing things about the Charlotte Mason homeschooling method, but I quickly learned that my kids were not really interested in sitting and down and doing art projects. <laughs> It was kind of a chore to get them to go outside, let alone be outside as many hours a day as Charlotte Mason suggests. And I honestly could not care less about them knowing how many and the actual names of all the species of birds that are in our backyard. <laughs> now, not to say that the, all those things are bad. If you love that stuff, please do you. <laughs> I had to learn to hold on to the parts of Charlotte Mason education, like reading living books and doing narrations and slow, short, simple lessons, those kind of things 
I can be all in on it. So I had to learn to keep those things that I enjoyed about the process and learn to get rid of the rest. Does that mean I'm saying to never try new things or to stop being on social media? No, <laughs> absolutely not. There are so many amazing ideas that I've come across and I'm sure you have as well that you have been able to implement that have brought joy and beauty to your homeschool. So please, by all means, get ideas, get inspiration, but just be careful to limit the amount of new things that you're trying to copy and be selective about the things that you choose to implement in your homeschool so you're not overwhelming yourself or just trying to replicate what someone else is doing because it looks like the right thing to do. It may take a little bit of trial and effort to find out exactly what works for your family, but I guarantee that if you do and you continue with those things, no matter what everybody else is doing and stick with them, your homeschool will be successful. Okay, the third big mistake that we often can make is sticking with something that isn't working. If you find that every time you're pulling out a curriculum or a book or some kind of lesson plan and your child dissolves into tears or you just get anxiety just thinking about having to do that subject, maybe it's not tears. Maybe it's just that a curriculum you're using isn't in your child's learning style and they're not retaining the information that you've been trying to drill into them. Or maybe it doesn't fit your teaching style or the freedom and the flexibility that you envision your homeschool to have. I challenge you to give that a big, long think about why you are continuing to use it if it is not working for you. Homeschooling should never involve tears. And if it is, there might be a problem with something that you're doing or using. This doesn't just go for curriculum. This could be an activity that you're doing that doesn't fit your family's um, schedule or lifestyle that you have right now. Maybe it's a routine or a schedule that worked for you for a season that just doesn't anymore, or it's just too rigid that it doesn't have any flexibility to do it to allow for real life to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. There are a number of things that we could be doing in our homeschool that we are sticking to because it just feels like that's what we're supposed to be doing, even if it isn't serving our family. I know oftentimes we can feel hindered from stopping something because we spent money on it and we don't want to waste that money or that resource. But there are many resources that are free or available to you online to finish out the school year maybe before you go ahead and purchase curriculum for the next year. You could sell the curriculum that you purchased and recoup at least some of that cost to help offset it and make it feel a little bit easier <laughs> to give up even if you're mid-year consider some of those things. Is there something in your homeschool that isn't working for you that does seem to be like you are hitting your head against the wall every time you're doing it or it doesn't bring you and your family joy anymore? I encourage you to take full advantage of the freedom that we have in homeschooling to let that thing go and try and find something else that is going to work for your family. The next bad habit that we can fall into is putting the checklists ahead of the relationships with our kids. This is never a good idea. <laughs> when I first started homeschooling, I had no idea what I was doing. And so I really did want a curriculum that had all of the lessons plans laid out for me, what I was gonna do for every single subject, every day, all through the year, so I could just open it and do it and not have to think about what I was going to do. And that quickly devolved into me feeling like a hot mess of a failure because I could never keep up with said checklists. And that was not a good plan. This made me feel really overwhelmed and I started getting frustrated with the kids when they weren't understanding something as quickly as the lesson plan said they were supposed to when they were just goofing off because they were kids and they just wanted to have fun and being little, they're supposed to have time for that. But that to-do list was my taskmaster and I felt like a failure if I was not checking off every single thing on that list. So hear me out though, I am not saying that you should not use checklists. Checklists can be a really powerful tool when they are used as a tool and not the slave master. And that can be a challenge to find that fine line between something that is useful for you versus something that is demanding something from you. If checklists work for you and your family, again, please, please, please 
continue using them and do what works best for you. But if you're like me, where that became feeling like it was too rigid and I didn't have any freedom and flexibility to allow real life to happen in our homeschool, then I encourage you to relax a little bit. And no matter what, we just need to be focusing on the relationships with our kids over all of the things that we feel like we have to get done for the day. It's easy to get caught up in that mentality where we feel like we have to get everything checked off our list or we're gonna feel like a failure as a homeschool parent. And that's really what that comes down to. As a homeschool parent, we all want what's best for our children. We all want our children to succeed. And we worry that if we don't do things the prescribed way that everybody else is doing them, that we are going to fail our children. And that is just not true. Please don't get so caught up in that trap of perfection that you fail to meet the spiritual and emotional and mental needs of your children. One of the biggest benefits and beautiful things about homeschooling is that we get so much more time with our children. We have that time to nurture them, to encourage them, to build them up, to help them grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ, to learn and develop their brains and their skills and all of the things to prepare them for a successful life. And we need to make sure that we are um, covering all of those needs and not just covering what the checklist says to do. Another mistake or bad habit that we can often fall into as homeschool parents is trying to be the perfect homeschool parent. When we first start homeschooling, we have this beautiful vision of how our homeschool is gonna be. Everybody's happy, kids are excited to learn, we're gonna sit down together and do all these things and have this wonderful time together. It's gonna be so great. <laughs> and then you actually start homeschooling <laughs> and things go great for a while because everyone's excited about doing something new and it's fun to try doing these things together as a family. But the problem is that you're working together as a family. <laughs> <laughs> Sibling rivalries can get in the way of lesson plans or children get sick. <laughs> Things get super busy. The dishes pile up, the house feels like a mess, and it quickly feels like everything is spiraling out of control. And then we get frustrated because we as a homeschool parent can't keep it all together. Homeschooling is hard. It really is. And at some point, every homeschool parent feels like giving up. We all really want to be that perfect homeschool parent, but the reality is no one is. We can't be, we just can't <laughs> because we are all flawed human beings working with flawed children, trying to make things work in a sinful, broken world. We are all sinners that fall short, <laughs> make mistakes daily, and we ultimately need the one who can lead us and guide us to perfect peace. We all need Jesus. We need his grace to cover us when we fall every single day because it's gonna happen. Now, just because you look to him does not mean everything's going to be easy peasy from here on out. <laughs> we all know that's not gonna happen. Homeschooling gives us no short supply of opportunities to remind us <laughs> that we all need grace. Hebrews 4.16 says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus, has grace waiting for us when we turn to him and we ask him to help us through each day, to help us overcome these feelings of frustration and feeling like giving up, like we're failing, because those are all lies from the enemy that wants to sabotage our homeschool. Because homeschooling really is kingdom work. We are raising up the next generation of children that will love Jesus, that will follow him and ultimately be trying to reach this world Reach those who are lost to bring them hope and peace that we have. God gave you your specific, unique children with a plan and a purpose. And by homeschooling, that gives us so much more time to invest in the lives and hearts and spirits of our children so that we can encourage them and equip them to go out and fulfill those plans and purposes that he has for their lives as well. He made you to be the perfect parent for your children. And it may not feel like it in the day-to-day -day when you feel like you're making mistakes and you're not sure how to figure something out or challenges showing up that you're not sure what to do about. But when you look at the author and perfecter of our faith, he will lead you and guide you. He will be there right by your side, sanctifying you in the process 
And ultimately, he is the one that can bring you the peace that you long for in your heart and in your homeschool. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says, The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. So don't give up. He is the faithful God that will be with you every step of the way and carry your homeschool on to completion.